Hi, I'm, I'm Hans. I'm with the Guardian Project. Um, this is, I will be talking about f and making uh, the most private and uh, you know, lockable <coughs> app store. Um, and so I, I never really know how to describe Guardian Project, so what today I came up with we're a free software swap team for privacy. Try that. Um, so I'm going to start with, the, I think this is something everyone unconsciously knows. People behave differently when they're watched. Um, if someone's looking over your shoulder, you will not do the same thing as when you're alone. We are all being watched. Every country in the world, some more than others, but if you're on the internet, you're being watched. That's the unfortunate state of affairs right now. Um, so that's something we're, as, a, as an organization, trying to help with. Um, so we are focused on trying to make privacy and software something that uh, is done by default <coughs> and something that is not really difficult to do. Um, one key uh, aspect of our approach is that we really look at the user experience of software and, um, and we always work in partnership with various organizations, a lot of um, journalists, high-risk human rights activists and things like this, so that we have um, real experience that we can drive our software process with. Um, and part of that also is that we want to show that you can have modern design and software that is very private. So um, Chat Secure uh, is our app it's for iOS and um, Android. Um, we believe is really the most private way that you can communicate right now. Um, and EFF also has reviewed it, other people as well. Um, yeah. and, go into, uh, and I forgot to mention, I'm going to go through a lot of stuff here. It's 20 minutes, and there's a lot of aspects of this. So if people have burning questions, please shout them out. And I will try and cover them, but also have questions at the end. Um, so, f uh, I imagine most people know what it is, but basically it's an app store. It's an app store for Android uh, that uh, focuses on being 100% verified free software. So everything is built from source by f infrastructure. Um, and so we were, as Guardian Project longtime recommenders and um, uh, users of f -Droid, and now um, we're spending 2016 focused on um, taking a lot of this work that's been brewing and uh, <coughs> making it easy to use and widespread. So security. To start with, f at for a long time has had quite solid security. Um, only allows HTTP connections. Um, it has a hard-coded pin inside of the app for which HTTPS certificate it expects for f -Droid uh, and also for our repo guardian info. Um, but that's, then the next level is that the index of apps that you get is, it is signed by a, a key in the same model as, say, a Debian does. Uh, so it's a model that's pretty well tested um, and proven. Um, then, um, unlike, well, uh, the signing process actually happens on offline machines, which is a massive pain, but, but we've decided it's a, a, a really important part of it. And then the last piece of this whole distribution puzzle is that you get Android, you have this built-in signature on the file, the APK file, is what an app is, um, that gives you pretty strong um, protection um, that the updates that you're getting are from the same developer. Uh, that often depends a lot on what the developer does. But, yeah. So, <coughs> decided not to. Okay. Uh, we are very much inspired by Debian in um, F Droid, uh, and I'm a Debian developer as well. And we and we um, are working on and integrating work in Debian. So things like getting the whole Android SDK building in Debian is one of the things that we are tackling. Um, so to go into the less, less bullet points and more kind of how we think. Um, so ultimately, I think this is about trust. So we want to get software that, doesn't, that does things that we expect it to and doesn't do anything that we don't expect it to. 
we don't, you know, we don't want it to be dumping private information to places we don't want that. Um, but right now, software as it is, you always have to trust someone. At the very least, you have to trust um, the author of the software. Um, with most software distribution processes, you have to trust a fair amount of the distribution process. And, and these things are, even if you're technical, you have to know about them to understand, well, is this something that's trustworthy to me? Does this meet my requirements? And so this is a, a difficult um, scenario for, for everyone. It requires people to, to think about hard things. Um, but we also, this is all based on computers. I mean, computers are good at automating things. And so this is, we really focus on like, how can we make a system where we trust as few people as possible? I mean, it sounds a little paranoid, I get, but this is mostly what we want to think. We want, we are interested in the software author, what they're making, and we have maybe some relationship to that author because you know, we have thought out their software using it. It's, it is possible so that we don't really have to trust anyone in between. Um, because we can, you can have the computer set up lots of processes uh, to um, to make it so that it's, it's something that anyone can verify in an automated way. Um, so for that, I spent a lot of last year writing a big grant, and I'm really terrible at grant writing, but I managed to get it. Uh, uh, so we now have all of this kind of stuff that I'm talking about is working, uh, I mean, so the core security stuff of f is there and solid, but there's a lot of stuff now we want to make it really, all, all the things that we want to make it really solid work now, but now we really, we have this big chunk of money to focus on making it really easy, transparent, um, and allow other people to verify our claims. So, to start with that, what most app stores no is actually a lot. Um, so uh, in Android, there are most people probably only use Google Play, but in, in, if you're in China, there is no Google Play for the most part. So there's a lot of app stores out there. Amazon has an app store. Basically, all of them that I've seen, um, they require that you log into them. So you're telling them who you are right there. Uh, and of course, they use that the by default. At the end of these days, if you log in, they track you. So they track everything that you search for everything that you look at, so you look at a specific app, uh, everything that you like, download, install, everything you uninstall. Um, something like Google Play actually tracks the apps that you launch and how often you launch them. You use them uh, based on uh, your IP address. They know where you are. Uh, they know your preferred language, the language of your device based on um, the, the descriptions. That, uh, and metadata that your, your, your client is requesting, so it's displayed. So it knows quite a bit about you. Um, so then really the question, what does the App Store actually need to know to do its job? Well, it knows something. If it knows nothing, it's kind of useless. That's about it, yes. How to give you the files you request. I want this file. So HTTP, it knows, I want to say get, give me this file, it should give it to you. That's all it really needs. So that means um, the index is what apps are available. Uh, description, long form description, screenshots, icons, things like this. Um, the app itself, of course, you decide to install it. Um, you need the app, you need the APK file. Um, so with F-Droid, the way this works is it's just flat files, and just files on a, on a plain HTTP server, you just request it, it delivers it to you. Um, and all the rest of the logic happens in the client. Um, so, um, that means, you know, there's no analytics, um, and then logins, usernames, all sorts of other things. Uh, and you, then, with the quite solid transport mechanism that we have, People who are looking at the network also can't see what you're, um, what you're getting. Uh, then on top of that, uh, use it via Tor or other anonymity proxy, then the server itself doesn't even see well, who you are very well. And it won't, they won't, with Tor, it won't even see a picture of you in the long run. But with Tor, you basically every 10 minutes, it looks like you're coming from a different IP address. So with Tor and F-Droid, you really are quite anonymous. 
And if you think you can improve your song, please do and just tell us about it so we can fix it. Um, so then, now we have this nice pipe, trusted pipe, but you know, if we put garbage in on one side, it's going to still remain garbage when it comes on the outside. Um, and the sad fact of Android, uh, probably development in general, but um, most, the kind of standard development setup is not very good security-wise. And even what I find kind of scary is the Google re recommended setup is to include your app's signing key just on your regular laptop where you're like browsing videos or clicking on malware links. And that, that key is supposed to last 30 years. And whoever has that key can make a fake version of your app. So yeah, it's not, not a great thing. And, and then another version, if, you, if people follow this Xcode ghost attack, this was the attack on developers. It, um, it, they put out mirrors of, uh, on mirrors they put out versions of Xcode that were faster than the Apple servers in places like, a lot of places in the world. Um, people downloaded it, and what that did was insert malware into every app that was built with that version of Xcode. Android is very much, a lot, most development is, is very vulnerable to this attack. So verify the soft tools that you get. Um, and this is also, so this is part of the stuff we're now really focusing and addressing in trying to automate a lot of this kind of downloading of, of the development tools, getting it directly from Debian. Uh, we'll try to get as much as possible into things like Homebrew and Mac ports, um, and maybe Sigwin with C. Um, so then, uh, another key part of this is what's known as reproducible builds, which I'm going to go very quickly over because there's later. Holger has a talk tomorrow afternoon. Eleven. I want to know more about reproducible builds. Oh, there he is. At 11. Tomorrow at 11 a.m. in? Johnson. I don't know what that was. Johnson. Johnson. <coughs> the big Anyway. <laughs> um, so the idea of reproducible builds is that anyone who downloads the source code can recreate the exact same file. That's the fundamental idea. So that then you can that using this process, you can anyone can take the sources code and can build an uh, APK file, compare it to the one that they got from Aftroid. And if it matches, they know that it came only from the source code. If it doesn't match, then something's wrong. Um, so we have a, couple, a handful of apps that are in Aftroid via a reproducible process. Right now, it's kind of painful to do. So. This is something we're focused on trying to make it dead simple so that it's just you use the Aftroid commands, Aftroid build, and you build a version of your app and submits it to Aftroid, and you get this reproducible process. Um, so, this is something I want, lot, I would love anyone who wants to try this out for their Android apps, because uh, we want lots of feedback from developers to make this addressing how people work and making it useful and easy. So, Right, so now in this whole picture, I think it's really quite secure. So um, like I said, are we using Tor um, and with a full reproducible build process, even if the F people who run Aftroid.org web server and the build infrastructure are totally trying to get you, you can verify that it's only from the source code that from your original upstream developer. So we want to get to the point where even the people running the servers can't uh, mess with it without being caught. Um, and we were pretty close to that, using Tor especially. Um, uh, so then, and then of course we need to automate this. Like most people, very few people I expect will try to reproduce the build of every single app they use. We love all the people that do, so part of this whole process is, is um, making the, uh, uh, the whole build server infrastructure really easy to set up and use. Um, and so we hope just organizations that have a specific uh, concern about the security of the software they use will just run their own verification server and publish that. So they just say, hey, we're just, you know, we're interested in these 50 apps, we rebuild it, we publish, and, and just com you can compare it quite easily to Ftroid, what's on Ftroid.org. Um, the whole thing has been also audited by a company, a uh, pen testing company called Cure53. You can read the audit. There were issues found. We fixed them. Um, we, we love more anyone who wants to attack and tell us about it. Um, 
issues we, we love more. Um, and then, so one of the last pieces is um, uh, that you don't um, need to use fdroid.org. You can make up your, your own repository, turn off fdroid.org, and entirely control it yourself if you need to. So that's, this is the goal, the chain of trust from the, app, the developer's source code to the app that's on um, your device. So now, flipping to the another side of this whole thing is uh, is access. Um, there's a lot of reasons why people can't get apps sometimes. Um, uh, maybe some of the more well-known ones these days are various um, internet outages, deliberate internet outages, where um, companies and co governments order internet to go out. Um, in there's also inadvertent internet outages. I mean, I worked in downtown. Manhattan in September 11th, and there was a lot of places without internet for a month or two. I mean, without internet, without phones, without cell phones. So, you know, it can happen everywhere. Uh, also, a lot of places in the world, the internet is still pretty expensive. Uh, and apps can get pretty big, especially when you're up to, say, Firefox, you have 40 megs on, uh, and getting updates and things like that. Um, uh, and, and then in other places, people are just concerned that if they're being monitored, that they can get in trouble for downloading services. Um, so we want to try and address all these kind of use cases in the whole Asteroid uh, ecosystem. So here's like kind of a map of how I'm thinking about it. Um, this is this is you. This is Asteroid.org. Uh, we also, I mean, we're not obviously running the Google Play Store, but we want to make sure that if we play nice with it. Um, so the Android security model actually makes that relatively easy because um, it's all the app is identified just really by that signing key. Um, so yeah, you can get your, you know, via Wi-Fi, via whatever way you get internet. You can use also Tor. Um, you can get apps from the central server at the same time. Um, you can subscribe to individual uh, developers or organizations repositories of apps. Um, so say you know in China. Google Play is blocked very pretty effectively. Um, so if we get to the point where Fdroid is blocked, um, then there's, there will still be alternative servers, or someone can just start one when that's local to their city. Um, and then you can also, um, so I don't know if any people here were old Palm Pilot users, uh, but with Palm Pilot, you can be maps, and it was awesome, and it worked quite easily, and it probably had terrible security, but I don't know. Um, and so a bunch of us are old pilot, Palm Pilot users, and we're like, why can't we do that? Like, that was so easy on Palm Pilot, and no one... And so we're, that's, we're also putting this in Android, because it's actually totally doable. So you can easily send Bluetooth. Uh, Bluetooth is built in, it's relatively straightforward. We're also making, um, so what we call it, there's a swap process in Android, which um, uses uh, Bluetooth, uses, if you're on, um, same Wi-Fi, so it use just the local Wi-Fi. Um, so it doesn't have to have internet access, you just have to be, have, um, be able to talk to each other. Uh, and you can also have one um, phone act as a hotspot. So if there is no Wi-Fi around you and one phone can be a hotspot, the others can connect. And then this gives us, instead of just sending apps, that's like a little app store. You go in and you choose which apps you're sharing. Uh, and then the other person connects and you say, okay, I want that, that, that. You get updates. Um, yeah, works for any APK. Yeah. Um, yeah, any APK, that's in, so any app that's installed on your device will show up as an option for something you can put in your local swap store. Um, yeah, so that's the thing. The APK, in terms of the distribution part of this, it's just any APK, wherever you get it, just don't tell me you're using it for piracy. Uh, you know, I can't stop you. Don't tell me. Um, but it, it will work on any APK. They're just a zip file. Um, so this is all, so this stuff is all working, but difficult. <laughs> so that's what we're really working on. And we want lots of feedback to make it not difficult, because we, we think it's just really a matter of some rounds of design and, and uh, feedback. Um, so the last part of all this, um, 
So as I said, we're also adding something totally new. So app stores have media handling. So we're like, I just left, right? There's a lot of free media out there. Um, so we're adding uh, media handling. So it means audio, ebooks, I mean, uh, uh, audio books, video, ebooks, anything. Uh, there's also something we want feedback on what, what specific kinds of media should be, formats should be handled by this product. Um, and uh, so people are to, the next step is another kind of fun way of providing access, uh, known as collateral freedom. You may have heard of this term. Basically, the idea is in countries that block a lot, you can tag along on websites that they are, really, are probably unwilling to block. So GitHub is one. So you can, we're going to make it so you can publish your F-Droid store to GitHub. And since it's all behind HTTPS, you can't really block one part of GitHub. So they have to block kind of all of it or uh, none of it. Uh, this also works with, like, say, Amazon F3, lots of cloud reserve, uh, uh, services. Uh, and really, this is a, a group called Great Fire. We're actually based in China. They, uh, they're really kind of pioneering it. And then the last part is we want people, non-technical people, if they want to be able to, to, to curate their own collections. So tools to just say, like, I want to subscribe to Guardian Project's apps and um, someone else's apps, and I want to add my media, and then I want to publish my own app store. So this will be a curation tools. And so that's us, fdroid.org, Guardian Project. Yeah, find it, and I'm on. Thank you. for questions. Are there uh, any builds of Android with trust support built in for F-Droid? What? Trust support. So, you know, in only trust known sources or whatever. Is Replicant built with default oh, trust see. of f um, Right. So, if people are known, you, right now, with alternative app stores in Android, you have to go in and un you check on unknown sources. So, yeah, this is something we're also working on. Um, right now, you can make after it is a system app, but that means either you have to root or you have to be able to flash it. Uh, that's very difficult to work around. Because <laughs> otherwise, that means you, to get it in any other way, you have to have an export. Uh, but what we are planning on doing, we have a strategy of trying to, uh, we're going to try and get it integrated into ROMs. Uh, that varies a lot based on the ROM. So if anyone works on ROMs and we would love to work with ROM people, get Android integrated. So that, then we have the exact same level of support as Google. Uh, mentioned Signal earlier, uh, okay. uh, Signal developers uh, showing in May. Yeah, it was everything about security, and the Signal developers themselves claimed about security issues. Just for asking uh, Signal to get off the trade. So there are issues that I don't remember. Well, Signal is not 100% piece of software, so that's the blocker, right? Uh, they use the Google Play services, and that's a that's a binary blob jar. So can't be, and it's required. That's for um, GCM, the messaging. But in terms of their security complaint, their security, security, their security complaint was that F-Droid stores and generates the key, and with the reproducible process, that's the optional. So you can say because we can reproduce the exact same file, we can just take the developer's signature. Like we reproduce the file, the, the, the developer signature verifies. So that's so that makes it so it's a it's a choice. So some developers are honest and, and say I can't I don't want to maintain my own key because it's a pain in the butt, and so you can use F Droid one. So say SMS secure, which is a fork of Signal. Uh, that's the, their process is to, that the F Droid does design a key, uh, but it's now optional. With it. More questions? Uh, we have one final question. Hi. Uh, you mentioned making Android more accessible to regular people. Yes. Uh, have you considered maybe rebranding, changing the name? Because like it's not super obvious, right? <laughs> yes. We there's a lot of discussion about that. But unfortunately, like you know, so we have like a roughly half million dollars in funding, which sounds like oh my god, that's so much money. 
But when you run a, a development process that's not that much money, or you're trying to do a lot, and like rebranding probably would take a third of that. So hey, if someone wants to like give us a bunch of money to rebrand it, all right, we'll, we'll do that. But right now it seems like there's a lot of other things that would, like for example, we're gonna when part of this funding is totally be doing the user experience to feel much more like a modern app store. Right now it feels very 2010. Okay, thank you. Nice.